Welcome to Make the Grade with the success doctor, Stephen Green, where you'll discover actionable strategies to help your student to reach their academic goals, to excel at standardized testing, and to plan for the college admissions process painlessly. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Green. All right. This is a super duper mega special, unique Thursday, Education Live Thursday on Wednesday. Can you believe it? Why is this the case? My special guest today, Hallie Steinberg. Hallie was actually on the Thursday night Education Live event, and we had minor, minor, minor technical difficulties. So I think it is so important for everybody out there to hear her message, understand what's going on. Very, very important material we're going to talk about that we decided to say, hey, let's just do it again. Plus, I enjoy talking to Hallie, so it's just going to be fun, informative, and educational, and exciting. And uh, so how are you? Introduce yourself. Say hello. Hi, I'm great. My name is Hallie Steinberg, and I, first and foremost, am a mom of three kids, and I'm also a special ed teacher and a certified health coach. So I have a lot of experience with children, working with children and having my own children. I need, I need a lot of applause for that. Three children alone <laughs> in this day and age, right? <laughs> well, speaking of three children and I correct me if I'm wrong, but I think all of them are school age, right? Yeah. So here's a unique, listen, there's not, you're not unique in this situation as an individual, but we have a very unique situation in the world this moment where most, not all, but most kids are home at virtual school. That may change certainly in the long run. So here's the challenge. A lot of parents are telling me, I'm trying to stay home, do my work. I got a third grader, seventh grader, ninth grader. They're complaining. They won't sit still. They can't sit still for seven straight hours. Who can blame them? Um, not everybody has the luxury of being able to just take off and essentially homeschool their kids. So what I want to get into right off the bat here is this whole virtual education thing has created some issues. It's not healthy, I can't think, to stare at a computer for six and a half hours, right? Yeah. People get up, they have candy, they're not eating as well. So yeah. let, let's just let's just certify nutrition, health coach, whatever, health coach. What's your advice here? Let's give some right off the bat best practices how to um, did make the most of this situation, maybe in a nutritional sense, in a physical sense, in a healthy sense. Right. Absolutely. Well, I'm living in right now. I have three kids, as I said. I have a fourth grader, an eighth grader, and a tenth grader. So I've got one in elementary, middle, and high school. So I can see them and how they are in each grade, which is kind of interesting. Um, I And I'm also working from home. Uh, doing virtual coaching sessions. So that's interesting as well. And as we speak, I hear my children outside the door and wandering around the, the house. So it's definitely <laughs> a, a different world that we live in right now. What I'm finding with my own experience with my own children is that it's so much screen time. And it's it's very difficult, especially for some of the younger children, um, especially for those kids with uh, some maybe attention issues or distractibility issues or just kids that like are active learners and are very energetic, which I happen to have. So I find what I am making sure that my kids are doing is taking breaks. Uh, and now, you know, as they get older, they might fight you on that, but making sure that they get a moment or two to get outside, get some fresh air, get some sun, that vitamin D is so important. They're finding with COVID in general health and we are vitamin D deficient typically as Americans. So get outside, get that sun, Get some play time in if you can. Uh, I always call it play time, activity time, but get their bodies moving. They need a chance to get away from the screen and get in that mind numbing, staring, eye strain um, to really get outside or even if it's a rainy day or too cold, play, but getting their bodies moving. We need to make sure that they're getting their activity. And we know, especially as a special ed teacher, we know activity helps, especially those kids with distractibility, or attention issues, getting them to get their bodies moving and then to have to make, then to focus on a task really mm -hmm. makes a huge difference. Uh, let's start with the positive. Okay. 
Great. What I mean, you obviously you mentioned getting moving, right? Mm -hmm. Are there some specific maybe dietary recommendations? Maybe, I mean, I guess the obvious ones are eat apples instead of candy bars or fruit, you know, but um, let's see if we can make a little checklist. Okay. So we got one side on the good shoulder, right? The angel is going to say, here's the things you should be doing. Yep. So let's hear them first. And then we'll say, what, what really are you saying as a health coach people should avoid? Okay. Yep. So first half, positive half, what do people want to make sure they're doing uh, to, just to ensure maybe even their attention, you know, just yep. their ability. Absolutely. So where, where right. do you start with this? So I would say first off to make sure that your kids get a good, we call it brainy breakfast. So a breakfast that has complex carbs, healthy fats, and some lean proteins. You don't want to just only simple carb breakfast, some of the sugary cereals, because what happens is their insulin, their blood sugars will spike, and then they'll be irritable, hungry, won't be able to focus as well. So you want a really good basis for your morning. So like, now, like oatmeal with apples in it or oatmeal something. Oatmeal with some nuts, possibly, okay. you know, tree nuts or, you know, depending on if they have allergies or not, of course, or mm -hmm. even a bowl of cereal. But just keep keep an eye on that sugar content for the cereal. Um, I, I always uh, say... Uh, 363 rule is a great way of figuring out for label reading. 363 rule meaning you want at least three grams of fiber, less than six grams of sugar, and at least three grams of protein. And that's with snacks and cereal. I mean, if you can get that, that's that's basically a good way of remembering some of these label reading tips and choosing your best snacks. Because even granola bars, I mean, you can get, there are some that are very high in sugar, and there are some that are lower in sugar and have more of the uh, healthy fats and lean proteins like the nuts and things like that. So I would say start off with a really good solid breakfast and make sure they're drinking, they're hydrated. A lot of kids, my kids in particular, they wake up, they want to do all these things, but they don't want, they don't drink. <laughs> but so I, I have to tell my kids, did you get your drink of water? First thing when they wake up, because as adults, we tend to drink because, you know, we get dry at the night and as we get mm -hmm. older, I don't know, I, I, I'm more thirsty in the morning than I used to be. But just making sure that our kids drink, they are often dehydrated and we don't even realize it because they've gone mm -hmm. 10, 9, hopefully 10 hours of sleeping without hydration. So really getting that water is actually very important as well um, or some kind of fluid. Um, so once again, that morning breakfast. Also, you want to make sure they are snacking throughout the day. You want to make sure they're eating every two to three hours. Um, and I recommend every snack to have some form of a fiber or protein as well. So, you know, just a simple carb is maybe going to help them for a short term, but then they're going to have this blood sugar spike and then they're going to get hungry, once again, get irritable. So you want something that has a complex carb with some protein, some fiber to help stabilize and keep them satiated for longer. So, you know, I can give you some examples of uh, apples and peanut butter or, um, cheese on and, and whole grain crackers or a yogurt with um, some nuts. I see something that has basically, once again, the, the lean fats, but you definitely want the proteins and some complex carbs. So you don't really want them to have a cookie for a snack or even a muffin is very high in sugar. So you want to make sure you're adding a lot of those other things that help them. So snacks uh, throughout the day, but the other thing we want to get away from is snacking all day long. So I, I personally have a daughter who's got the iPad, the school issued iPad, and she'll walk in, in between, you know, they're not supposed to be eating, you know, in class, but mm -hmm. right between classes, she's going to go because class is over, go get something to eat. She's not always hungry, but it's become a habit where, all right, class is over. I'm going to go get something to eat. So also being aware of maybe too many snacks, being aware that, Sometimes they're becoming ha habitual snackers. So keeping an eye on that as well. Are you really hungry? We call that intuitive eating, not really knowing when you're hungry and when you're kind of just bored or just want mm -hmm. something else to do or something, some stimulation. So it would sort of beg the question that this is going to require at least some level of planning, right? Yes. Yeah. So, you know, maybe as a parent, you know, in the morning you're, you're cutting up an apple and you have it available because a lot of kids, it's like the first thing they can grab, first thing they see, right? And, and you can't blame them. Yeah. Um, so there's, a, there's an element of planning. Maybe the night before, you do a little bit of food prep. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I'm, I'm going to maybe put words in your mouth and suggest that everything you just said for kids is probably equally true for adults who are confined, uh, you know, to, to the same sort of situation, which is kind of true anyway if they're in an office. You know, yeah. just getting around, being active, kind of getting the blood flowing a little bit. Yeah. 
Anything else you want to add to the positive to do side of the ledger? Um, just mental breaks. I, I kind of mentioned beginning okay. that side, but you alluded that to with adults. You know, mm-hmm. mental breaks, getting a chance to do something else, something that you're that you enjoy. Right? If you want to write a story or go take a walk with your dogs or your pets, um, just a mental break of some sort to kind of you know, it, it's a very stressful time for our kids. Mm-hmm. They're, they're going through a lot of change, and it's not only academic, but social change. They're not seeing their friends. They're not interacting normally how they normally do. They're not getting the action, the play time. If they're not in person, you know, of course, even if they are in school, they're not necessarily getting the normal interactions. So it's very stressful. So having those times to play, get a moment to breathe and and take a break is very important as well for adults, just as much as for kids. Steve Green here. I'm with Hallie Steinberg. And uh, this is Education Life Thursday Special Edition. We are normally here every Thursday night, 8 o'clock. And uh, great information. We're talking nutrition, diet, health, how it relates to the whole virtual learning COVID experience. So let's flip over to the flip side. The not the not to do's, the to not do not do's, <laughs> whatever it is, so the, the, the bad I- side. So is there, so you already, you basically said, okay, um, high fiber versus sugary. I get that. Um, what else would you put on the avoid? I'm going to call it the avoid list because we're still people, you know, that's fine to have a brownie every once in a while. Right. Absolutely. Right. I mean, I know you feel moderation. moderation. I I know that. Um, so let's talk about though, just bet, you know, we had best practices. Now, what would you say are non, I'm going to say non best practices. Okay, and I think moderation is key because there are kids and, and adults as well. Very restrictive diets, unless you have actual allergy or health or medical conditions, mm-hmm. and they can be very harmful for our for ourselves. Um, so I love to say moderation is key because if you completely restrict all sugar, our kids, that's very hard for kids, especially socially and in our environment, unless there's, of course, a medical concern. So I always say a little bit is, is fine just not too much of anything, even good food, too much of anything is not good. So let's think, let's talk about some of the things I always like to say to avoid. Um, Number one on my list is artificial sugars, artificial flavoring and coloring, especially Mm -hmm. those kids that are sensitive with some attention issues or some of maybe possibly some uh, delays of some sort. You really want to be careful with that uh, because they really trigger um, they actually go through our blood brain barrier and they, they're called excitotoxins mm-hmm. and they a- affect our brain development and our brain functions. So artificial coloring, artificial flavoring. So those NutraSweets, Splendas, ki- keep the kids away from yeah, them. Red dye number two. All that stuff. And right. there's a lot of kids that have allergies, but even if they don't have a true allergy per se, you can see, I mean, as a teacher, when I was teaching, the children that were eating the, these things as a snack you know, once again, this is when COVID was not around, but but when you Mm -hmm. were in the classroom, you could see the direct correlation to their behavior, their focus absolutely afterwards, even if they weren't allergic to it. So stay away from those things. The other thing is, is those things, these excitotoxins that I'm mentioning affect children far more than they affect adults. So although I do not recommend it for adults as well, um, our children are constantly developing and growing their brains are growing at such a fast rate so we actually are, the kids are far more affected by those things especially with their brain development and growth than adults so that's important so i'd stay away from all of that as much as possible now that's one that i actually say if you can restrict go for it because really really limit that if possible the mm-hmm. other thing you really want to limit is high fructose corn syrup which is basically modified corn um, and it's basically a sweetener that is has no nutritional value. It's really harmful for your body. It affects, it can affect your cholesterol, it can affect brain development, it can affect so many things. It makes you crave more sugar, and it's in so many of our products. So you just have to glance and see. I mean, it's in breads. It's in uh, there's um, it's in ketchups. It's in things that aren't even sweet that you would not even realize that it's in. So just mm. keep an eye on high fructose corn syrup. You really want to stay away from that. And then the other one I would say is, I'll give you three because I don't want to overwhelm. But um, another one (laughs) you want to stay away from really is trans fats. Another word is hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated oils. And basically what it is, is it's a monosaturated oil or fat 
that they add hydrogen, hydrogen um, atom to, to make it shelf stable. So basically, if you look at Crisco or like shortening, that's an example, a perfect example of trans fat. It's, it's shelf stable. It can last for decades and it's, it's, it's easy to cook. So it's okay in high heat and it's cheap but it's really harmful for our bodies. It affects our cell membranes. It affects our heart. It affects us in many ways. So trans fat. So to find out that you wanna look at not just our labels that say trans fat, zero grams, because even if it says zero grams, it actually doesn't mean it, do it has zero grams. It could be less hmm. than 0.5 grams. So it's called the trans fat loophole. So hmm. what you wanna look for is in the ingredients, if you see anything like partially hydrogenated or hydrogenated, you do want to choose a different um, different um, food because you want to stay away from that. So those are three things. Now, once again, I, I don't want to promote extreme thinking. You know, if you do have them, you know, don't panic. But it, you know, there are better choices out there. So those are three basic groups of things I, I say to really avoid. I I think you bring up two good points. So I'm going to try to do the first one, not forget to bring up the second one. But you, you, you suggested that many of these things have a, um, a stronger effect on a child than an adult. Yeah. Or maybe a more deleterious effect on a child than an adult, right? Yeah. Um, and in the end, because you get parents saying, I mean, what do you say to the parent who says, well, my, my kid likes it. You know, what's an Oreo? I mean, I'm not dissing Oreos. I guess I kind of am. But um. The, the, you know, so that's kind of something we're battling, right? You know, the kids are, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. Oh, you know, go have whatever's in the pantry. Uh, I, I got to think, um, you know, if the question is, should kids eat more fruits and vegetables and more um, uh, fresh food, you're, you're obviously for that big time, right? Um, how much as a parent, this is how I want to ask the question, as a parent who should be um, controlling this situation, at least to a degree, yeah. if not completely, um, how, how much is role is the parent to, to sort of set policy here? Right. Without well, getting crazy, we, we, we've agreed on that, right? right. And I absolutely, it's a great question and it really varies on age. Uh, two things. First off, if you have it in your house, your kids will eat it. If you don't have it in your house, they can't you eat can it. find it somewhere else, but not in the house. So just keep that in mind. So if you are the person that goes shopping in the supermarket, try and stay on the per perimeter of the supermarket for shopping. You know, all the processed foods are in the middle. So just keep that as a, as a guide and, and think of if you are buying chips and crackers and cookies, you know, take a look at label reading. And that's one thing I actually work with my, with my, um, with my clients. There are better choices. There are some cookies that are better than others. There are some trail mix bars that are better than others etc. You know, so just learn to read the labels and maybe don't necessarily cut out something, but maybe make a better choice. There are some crackers like, or chips like Doritos. And then there are some that are corn chips. I mean, there are different mm -hmm. choices, I should I say. So that's one thing. Um, and if you buy it because the kids like it, they are going to eat it. But if you don't buy it, they'll get it. They will still get it. They'll go to the friend's house, you know, right. right. But, but at least you know, it's, it's not your, it's on not your conscience your or something. And the other thing I say is start young um, with trying new things, being getting your kids to have the ability to choose things to try that are healthy. So I always say have them garden or take them to a supermarket and show them the fruits and veggie section. Have them try new things. I mean, go take a look at the star fruit. If you go to a supermarket, my, my kids love to look at star fruit. You know, there's so many cool fruits and vegetables that you might not even have never tried, but have the kids try them. And remember, Kids need to try things multiple, multiple times. They say eight to 12 times to even develop a taste, uh, you know, an enjoyment of certain things. So, you know, your kids, avocado is one of the healthiest things to eat with the healthy fats, with all the nutrition, um, the vitamins and minerals. But a lot of kids don't like the taste. Well, you can be creative with avocados. You can make it guacamole. You could mm -hmm. blend it in things. But keep having them try, even if they don't like it. Just have them try, try a taste here and there. Um, and I also want to address the issue of the power issue with food. And you really do want to be careful with that, especially as children get older. When your kids are younger, elementary age, you know, you have a little bit more say in what they're eating, especially when they're young, young. Uh, but as they get older, it becomes more of a, you know, 
independence issue, you know, they want to make their decisions becomes more of a power thing. And you do have to be careful with that as a mom and dad or grandparent, because there can be other issues that form, whether it be a, you know, self-esteem issues, dieting issues, you know, of course, eating disorders. It could be um, also all these different types of issues with uh, re their relationship with food. So hmm. I always say, you know, you have a little bit more leeway with younger children, but as they get older, I mean, I have a middle and high schooler, I have set the foundations of what healthy eating looks like with them. But look, my kids are just like everybody else's kids. You know, they make choices that I personally wouldn't make or don't really <laughs> want them to make. But they're, you know, <laughs> if I tell them, no, they're never going to eat sugar or no, you can't have what your friends are eating, that I think that would cause more of a problem. That's my opinion. So I say right. moderation. I don't have it so much in the house, but they're kids. But as long as they have the educational foundation, of mm -hmm. what you should be eating and why. And I think that's really important. So I do, like I said, do you tread carefully as you get older, but remember you still are the parent, you know, you oh, are the right. one buying yeah. the food. You know, if they say, I'm not gonna eat something, I'm only gonna eat something else. Well then you don't have to buy it. That That's one way of dealing with that. But just having that talk, but try not to be this authoritarian of saying you can never have something because that tends to backfire. But once again, it's very individual with every family. I'm not, I'm making blanket statements here and it's very individual. No, but, but I think, I think you make the obvious point that somebody has to be in charge. Absolutely. And when you have a, uh, a nine year old, it's not the nine year old. No. You have a 17 year old. We get it. You know, you know, it's, it's parallel in the sense of what I do is in the academic side. So what we do is, you know, we help kids beginning whenever. And once they get done high school, you know, as a parent sending a kid off to college, at least in a normal year, uh, you're saying, hey, I hope the kid's got the skill set now. Yeah. You, you're not going to teach it to them the last week of their senior year no. any any more than you're going to develop their habits dietarily or nutritionally. Yeah. Um, I know you uh, subscribe to uh, a sort of a, a health regimen, the, the lean concept, right? Yeah. And we've we've talked about this before. Hallie was a, a past visitor on the Make the Read podcast. I'm sure all of you out there listen to it. By the way, if you're listening now and you want to make a comment, just type it in the comments. We'll try to answer it live. Uh, give, give us a quick overview. of. of I know it's an acronym. Yep. L-E-A-N. Tell us what they all stand for, what they mean, how we can use them to our best advantage. So lean I lean, the acronym stands for L, lifestyle, lifestyle. E, exercise, A, attitude, and N, nutrition. Okay. And so very broad, general stuff. Good. Right. Four pillars of health. So, you know, just write down lean, but not, I'm not talking about lean body. I'm talking about the acronym. And I love that acronym because it really deals with all ages, whether you're five years old, 50 years old, 90 years old, those four pillars affect your life in your health journey, no matter what age you are. So it's not only about nutrition. It's about your lifestyle choices, how much water you drink, when you decide to eat, how, what your mindset is, your attitude as well as activity. So it's mm. all these things that make a healthy life. And I think it's so important to understand that it's a journey, that there is no perfect healthy life. We as humans will not be able to live that. You know, there's temptation, it, there's our society with our foods. It, 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 we do the best we can. And I really strive to tell people, especially with people that I work with, that we look at that lean acronym as a guide and that every day we can make these small changes to make improvement or change, improvements to our health. But it, it can be incremental changes. It can be small changes, but these things really do make a difference. And we call it the IRHA, you know, uh, accountants or um, insurance people will, or financial advisors will talk about the IRA, which is your individual retirement account. Well, it was a money thing. It's like thing. your well, health I'm bank. Your IRA, right. ah. individual retirement health account. And what you do, you're always investing in that. What you do now, you're investing for the good or for, or for the bad. So what you're doing now, whatever age you are, will affect you in the future. So following those four principles and finding small changes to make a difference really will help you with your long health span and lifespan. Um, so I really, I really emphasize these small changes, little things that can make a big difference in all aspects of our health. Let me ask you one or two more questions and we're going to wrap it up soon. Okay. Um, I know you do health coaching. Yeah. So can you 
uh, briefly maybe just describe um, what that might be like for someone. So they, I guess now you're on Zoom or whatever, but um, you know, is it is it like recommendations for diet? Is it recommendations for health? I mean, I'm sure it varies person to person, but what would what benefit would somebody get, or what problem could be addressed slash solved uh, by somebody engaging and working with you? Great question. So it is very different for each person, but um, I because I work with children, I work with adults, I work with pregnant ladies, I work with a whole lot of different types of people, but. I think what I always focuses on, focus on is where the person is and what they want to change. And I help basically coach them to do that. I am their, their guide. I, I mean, I educate, but I'm their guide to help them make those small changes. So when I work with people, I don't really, I don't work on dieting. I don't work on weight loss. I work on how you can make your life healthier now and for the future. So of course, some people with healthier lifestyle changes are going to lose weight but that's not my focus. Um, it depends on who I'm working with, but when I do work with families, I do fun things, I make it very interactive. Uh, we do pantry makeovers, which is, and of course with COVID, it's a little bit more challenging, but you can do them virtually. Uh, basically we go through the pantry, we talk about the ingredients in our food. I teach traffic light eating, which is basically red light, green light, and yellow light foods. Very simple concept. Green light foods are your fruits and vegetables. Yellow light foods are your foods that you moderate, you know, lean proteins, healthy mm. fats. You just can't eat them, you know, you have to moderate them a little bit more. And then, of course, the red light foods are the sugars, the simple carbs, the things I told everybody to avoid. Um, so that's fun. And then we do stickers and we, we figure out which food is which. And then we do a shopping uh, list of what what brands we should be looking for in terms of which healthier choices. So I kind of make it interactive. The kids that get it, you know, feel involved, they feel like they're, they're um, having fun because I really think when you work with kids, you got, you have to make sure that they're having fun and they're interacted. They're, in, they're engaged because otherwise mm. it goes right over their head. I know that from teaching. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tell me about it. Um, I know you have, how, how would somebody get a hold of you? I know you have a, a, a really fun Facebook group, which is called, Healthy, healthy living. That's a, a good name for Hallie's healthy group. Yes, Hallie's yeah. healthy living. Yeah. So that's a Facebook group. They could just search that. And by the way, it's in the information stream below us here. Um, you want to share an email or something that uh, somebody wants to reach out? Absolutely. Well, a great way to look at some of my services and what I do in my philosophy is to check out my website, which is www.hallieshealthyliving.com. Which is right Hallie. there. Got it. Right yeah. underneath right us. There. Good. Good timing. You're, you're prepared here, Steve. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, believe me. I am prepared. Yes. Thank you. So Thank my you for website, noticing. You can always email me as well. It's halliesteinberg at gmail.com. And it's right below. It says my house, spell my there name. You go. See? Uh, but I really do a lot of my Facebook group. And I really promote, I, I would love you to share that with people. My goal is to help people, inspire them to make healthy changes, to teach them new things, things that I'm interested in about gardening, about recipes, about the importance of fruits and vegetables, healthy fats. So yeah, check out my Facebook group. I, I really love doing that. Let, let me ask you this question. So I've asked all my guests on this, this, um, do you, when we get through this period of time, do you think there'll be anything positive that people brought into their routine that we're going to carry forward? Um, because there's, there's people have had to make adjustments, right? I mean, you, you didn't have a choice. You made adjustments or you've kind of just were miserable. So, um, some, not all of them were terrible. Some, some were inconvenient for sure at best and some, but, but, but do, what do you think you people generally can take as a positive or maybe you found in dealing with people, uh, moving forward? I know in, in for an example, in my world, uh, there's just been a huge acceptance of the viability of online learning. I've, I've been teaching online for almost 10 years and sometimes it was yeah. almost a, a bless you, bless you. No See, drinking, that's, uh, you got to drink, you got to hydrate. Um, it, it was almost an uphill battle <laughs> saying to somebody, listen, um, the online is, is effective. I can do it. I know how to do it. I don't know if everybody in the world can, but I'm able to. And now I'm, I'm like 99% online. Yeah. So I think that in the education side is a carry forward. Yeah. Maybe, whether it's by necessity now or not. I agree with you. And it's opened up a huge market. I'm, <clears throat> I'm working with kids in different countries. I'm working with kids in many different states. 
And it doesn't really matter. They could be across the street or they can be in Japan uh, in, in, online. The technology is available. The technology is good. Um, in, in the health side, or maybe just in life, as a parent even, um, of three, <laughs> let's keep reminding people of that. Uh, <laughs> what, what do you, you see anything positive? Yeah. I mean, I, there, it's been a hard time, but there's been a lot of positive. Well, one positive that's not necessarily related to health per se is the amount of family time that people have gotten a chance to slow down a little bit. I mean, I know my kids play sports all the time. And during COVID, you know, really when things were shut down, mm -hmm. had a slower pace, which was kind of nice to kind of get together and regroup a bit. So that was kind of a positive. Now that sports are starting, which I'm thrilled about because you know how I, how, how much I love sports for kids. Um, you know, things are starting to get a little bit more hectic, but it's still making sure that we have that time as a family. So that's one. But I think in general, the emphasis of health, you know, there is a lot we can do to help boost our immune systems or, or, or not necessarily strengthen, but support our immune systems. Mm -hmm. So there's just so much out there that a lot of people don't know about. Uh, just generally, even with diet, whole foods, how important they are. Um, just, Apple a day keeps a doctor away. Well, there you go. But right. just whole foods and just fruits and vegetables, the importance of them, as well as getting outside and moving your body. And, you know, we, the CDC recommends, you know, certain things about, especially with COVID, but generally more and more we're finding out how important our health is affecting our immune system, especially mm -hmm. with COVID um, and, and certain things that you can specifically do. Um, and once again, these small changes can make a difference. So how do you support your immune system? W what do I need to do? And I, I'm not talking about, oh, taking supplements up the wazoo. I'm talking about real foods and healthy ways to move your body, these types of things. And I think it's the focus on how we can stay healthy and make a difference because it really our immune systems need support. You know, the, our diet or the American diet is really tough. So, well, yeah. Well, 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 because look, let, let's not in any way, shape, or form diminish uh, the effect COVID's had, but people are always going to get colds. There's still cancer. Yeah. I mean, look, and that's cancer, not a good thing. And that's a long term, sometimes development, developed process, heart disease, yeah. um, you name it, you know. So maybe this is a little bit of a wake up call because it's so extreme and so sudden that it got brought on that people just need to take more responsibility for their own health. Yes. I, maybe that that's might be a, an apt way to put it. And how important it is. It, it really yeah. be a focus. Right. So many of our diseases and our health issues, high blood pressure, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, a lot of them are very much diet related. Mm -hmm. And it's not like one day you have a cookie and you get diabetes the next day, right? No, we all know true. that. Over time, this is built up. And there is definitely genetic components for some things. Mm -hmm. So much we're finding is lifestyle and diet choices. It's called epigenetics, basically. It's basically how right. your lifestyle affects your genes and your gene mm -hmm. expression, which is an awesome, amazing field. And that's a whole other conversation for another well, day. That will be next time. We will bring this back again. So, okay. If you haven't gotten the message yet let me see if i can summarize and i'll let hallie summarize too take some breaks try to think about be conscious of what you're eating high fiber 363 leap uh drink water get active get some sun get some vitamin d the, i think the take-home message is be smart and take care of yourself and kind of just hit, take these challenges head on uh hallie anything i left out Simple changes make a huge difference. It doesn't have to be a huge overhaul. You can make small changes every day. Beautiful. Steve Green, Hallie Steinberg, Education Life Thursday special edition. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me just check the comments, see if there's any questions. Not right now, but that's good. <coughs> so I'm here every Thursday. Tomorrow night, uh, Carly Myers, who uh, Hallie happens okay. to know. Yep. Uh, stress less company. You've heard all about the nutrition, that side of it. Carl and I are going to talk about reducing stress through best practices. And isn't, it's not just like a meditation thing. She's not going to come on and say, go yep. meditate way beyond that really compelling story that she'll tell of how she got into this and how she's helping people. Um, make the grade. I am here. All these things we do education, live the podcast, et cetera, et cetera, to help you parents, you students for tools to maximize your education. So look for more of that. See you in the success community.
See you next week. Let's hit the theme music here. Actually, let's have a big hand for Ellie. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. There's the theme music coming in, too. And uh, Allie, thanks again. I really enjoy always talking to you. And uh, we'll, we'll set this up again because there's at least two or three other things I know we can get into. So, again, everybody, thank you. See you next time. You've been listening to Make the Grade with the success doctor, Stephen Green. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe. For more resources and support, please visit makethegrade.net.